Det är helt fint. Det är bra. Det Penelope. Hi, Amanda. Oh my gosh. Hey, Bryson. What's up, man? Hey, what do you think of Nelly? Do you love her? Yeah. Now, Josh, you loved those books, didn't you? Yeah, we, read, we read both of them last night. So thank you guys. Penelope Rex. Yeah. You're holding your little dinosaur there now, huh? Yeah. She's yeah. sleeping okay? Yeah, she's she's doing good. She uh she's she was she's she was like every hour eating, but now she's uh slowing down a little bit. But she's eating a lot more now, so it's all good. So good. Yep, it's fun. We got the newest member of the coaching program right there. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Well, today we're going to focus on something that a lot of uh, a lot of buyers are turning to because this market is hard. This market is hard for buyers. I don't care where you're at. Learning in progress. I don't care where you're at. There's a lot of competition out there for homes. And so what some people are turning to are new builds. So uh, let's talk a little bit about new builds in general. And then I have a really exciting activity that I'm pretty sure nobody here, aside from maybe Lauren has done with me. A couple of years ago, I did this, uh, this exercise where I encouraged all the, the members of the coaching program to go out and literally meet with a builder. And the purpose of this activity is to get to know, number one, to establish a relationship with a builder, but number two, to collect data. Our, our whole um, expertise in this field really comes down to knowing who has what products, where they have them, and what the incentives and offerings are that they have. So if I was to compare Builder X to Builder Y, they're going to build in different areas. They're going to have different starting price points. And most importantly for me, they're going to pay different commissions. Now, I'm going to share. Uh, so by the end of this conversation, by the end of this hour, we're all going to have a homework assignment. And I'm going to allow you guys to pick your own builder. We cannot have overlap, though. That's the one key. Our, our goal here is, I'm going to give you two weeks to go meet with the builder. And I would encourage you to do more than one. Meet with a builder. We're going to have X number of questions that I want you to ask them. And then the cool thing is you're going to get to come back on here and present what you found out to the team so that what we can do is start to build a Rolodex of all these different builders, what they're offering, and the, the numbers behind them. So that if anyone in your world comes to you and says, I'm thinking about building, you can say, oh, great. Where are you thinking of building? And then you can go to your cheat sheet and say, well, I know that builder X, Y, and Z are building in that community and they have a great product or they're you know, 12 months till closing, or maybe they're only five months till closing. There's differences there that we want to understand. And the really neat prop, uh, part about this is that when, our, when we're all said and done, we are literally going to be the local experts in our community. Does that sound cool? Now, uh, Kevin, and uh, if if she's on, Sam sometimes gets on. Kentucky is going to be a horse of a different color if there's only two of us on there. But I would encourage us, the, the reason that we're doing this, the why, is so that we can become more experts, right? There is nothing stopping Aaron from going out and interviewing 15 different builders to become really the expert so that anytime anyone brings up building, he's got, he's got that person. Anytime in the local Facebook group, somebody mentions, I'm considered building a home. Boom. I've got you in a message and here's everything I know. And would you like a quick snapshot of the differences between all the builders? Absolutely. 
And then I'm going to use you as my resource to help me buy that new build. So hopefully that's exciting to y'all guys. Um, I understand some of you might not be excited about presenting. Don't worry about it. It's literally going to be like, hey, what's the what's the answer to this question? What's the answer to this question? You're not going to have to come up with a crazy presentation. It's just present the facts to us. Cool. So I'm going to give you plenty of time, two weeks to do that. As I'm talking today, uh, I want you to be thinking of some builders that pop up in your mind as people that you might want to go learn more about. I would probably focus on the bigger names, the ones that are more prevalent around the city, the ones that you've seen personally building in your communities. Why would I want you to know more about the people building in your own community? Why would I want you to know more about uh, the, the builders that are building in your own community? So you can be their realtor of choice if they ever need that. Yeah, establish that relationship, good. Why else? Asked a different way, why do you wanna know what's going on in your community? Because you want to be the market expert. Sam says, because you want to be the market expert. 100% accurate. Good. So uh, after, uh, after we're done kind of talking about the new build process and what goes into it, uh, we'll, at, we'll go around the circle here and we'll just ask who, who wants to do what builder. And if you're not sure on what builders are out there, I can give you all some options. I'll do Ryan Holmes. Yes. I said at the end, uh, I said, shush, everybody, shush, shush, shush. All right, let's talk about the home, home building experience. I'm going to ask some questions and I want participation. Do home builders pay realtors? Yes. Ansi says, yes, very passionately. Especially you build the house, so yeah. <laughs> Because she built a house and that's why she knows. Great. Let me ask this again. Do all home builders pay realtors? Yeah, of course they do. No. Yeah, the actual answer is no. Not all, not all uh, builders will compensate. Do they want to give back to the community? It's a it's a private business. They can do whatever they want. Now they're I feel like they're idiots when they don't. However, I don't control that. Right. Uh, another question: Do all so this it was, was answered earlier? Has anybody here helped a buyer build a home? Just speak up, or are in the process of? Yes. No. Yes. 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 No. I just complete the home. It's completed. The agent on the home, but it's the external is not even completed. So kind of like a new building. Okay. Yeah, and lots of so uh, it's interesting how new builds work because you can actually uh, there's different phases of new builds so let's talk about that those of you who have uh closed a, a new build scenario can we hear from you what was that process like where was the completion rate when you got into contract uh lauren let's start with you if you don't mind you asked what the completion rate was like when you start, when you got them into contract, your buyer on a contract, where were they? Where was the builder at with the building the home? Had they started? Had they broke ground? What did that look like process wise? So, if I remember correctly, they had, so it was a neighborhood where like all the lands were already sectioned off and all of them had like the same sort of like foundation because um, I think there was only like, four or five different um, options to choose from that they already had preset. So yes, it, like the foundation was already dug up and things like that and the plot of land was ready, but um, you kind of had to choose 
which one you wanted and then you could make like small changes built on what you wanted based on what you wanted and uh as we have these conversations if you don't mind also volunteering who was the builder that you were using it was miranda holmes cool they have locations all over but this one was in london awesome Victor, I know you're in contract with uh, a person who is building a home. Can you tell me what that process has been like? Sorry, I'm on my way to change a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who else? That might be all the experience we have right now. But I don't know. Okay, Ancy. So you just recently built a house. Tell me, um, did you utilize a realtor for that? Um, because we had to use, we don't know anyone at that point, but they said uh because they have to give that three person commission to someone. So we had to find a realtor for ourselves. So then we ask around and then find someone. Who was the builder? Uh Pulte. Pulte. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Most so in my experience. If a if a buyer goes unrepresented into a builder's um, model home, they are chomping at the bit to get you under contract without using a realtor because that's going to save them three percent. Yeah, but they said they they had to give back to the community and. So, so Pulte likes to give back to the community. So that's that's brilliant of them because that encourages realtors to use them. Local realtors, so they are encouraging everyone. So we had we don't we have no idea. Then we are asking our friends, hey, who is you know? Then we just randomly find one person. Awesome. Let me give you my experience. I just went into contract this week on a new build with uh, those of you in Columbus. You've heard of Ryan Holmes, and. Um, this will be my fourth or fifth builder that I've worked with. The majority of my new builds have been with MI. I've also done work with Schottenstein, Rockford, and one other. Uh, but I was really surprised to see when the paperwork came back that they were only offering a flat fee. Um, their lead time was about 10 months uh, to completion. Uh, this one's going to be about nine months, it sounds like. Um, but yeah, as far as the compensation goes, uh, some builders are offering 3%. Some, off, some offer less than that in terms of percent. And some just offer a flat fee. When I found out what that flat fee was, I was very frustrated. Um, and the reason I was frustrated wasn't because I was going to be making good money for a little amount of work. It was because I pushed these guys towards building with these new this builder because they had an opening in the city that they wanted to be at and the process was going to be uncompetitive, meaning they weren't going to be placing multiple offers for this home. I pushed them this way from writing offers on $400,000 houses that would have paid me in theory $12,000, right? Gross commission. 3% of 4,000 is 12, 12,000 or 400,000 is $12,000. So I went from making a potential really nice payday down to making basically pennies on the dollar. And that's why I was prompted this week to have this conversation with you guys, because if you have the ability to be compensated fairly, I want you to be. So a question. How would you negotiate commission? Like, say, let's just not talk about Ryan Home, like a different one that's offering one or two percent instead of three. How would you negotiate commission to the rep? And because you have to tell your buyer, right, as well, right? And like, how would that look towards your buyer? Like, hey, you might, you know, just take less. It's about me getting the house in the first place. I 100% agree with you. And this, this me being frustrated is all personal. I would never express that to my buyers. <clears throat> because at the end of the day, this is not about me or my paycheck. It is simply about them getting into a house that they love 
for a good price. And that's what's happening. And so I'm not mad about that situation. I'm just, I'm frustrated at this builder and their approach to compensating realtors because I actually don't think it's fair. Um, but at the same day, at the same time, I realize that I sound like my nine-year-old when I say it's not fair. I sounds like I'm crying about it. I'm still going to make a small paycheck. But to Victor's question, unfortunately, there's not much negotiation that can be done. Each builder is going to have their own uh, systems and models, and very few are going to um, budge on that. And the reason I'm starting out the conversation about money is because honestly, we're all, this is a job for us. And I want you all to understand that all lenders are different. They're competing, but they're not all playing on the same field. So it was funny, right before COVID happened, MI, um, they were doing so well, they had a backlog of homes that they decided to try to cut the, they kind of decided to try to cut the realtor out of the situation. They reduced their commission from 3% down to, I think it was one and a half or two, basically because they could, because they, they had so many people coming to them to build houses that they could do whatever they wanted. So they thought, why not save some money on realtor commissions? That went over like a lead balloon in the realtor community. And within a year or two, they had gone back to their old ways of 3%. Why? Because most builders understand this is, this is a symbiotic relationship. If, if people are out there searching for homes, they're likely using realtors. And the realtor is that gap between the builder and an existing builder and an existing build. And if we can make this process easier, let's compensate the person bringing the business. So I'm really excited to see what y'all what y'all learn from all these um, different builders, because we're going to come and compare and contrast. It's going to be apples to apples, and uh, I'm excited for us to learn. So let's talk about what y'all know about the process. So uh, somebody tell me what what y'all think the process. Somebody who is not sold a home yet. Tell me what you think about the process of building a home. Like, what is what does that process look like in your eyes? Getting a pre-approval first. Okay. So that you know how much home you can afford. Go to the builder. Go to, uh, Auntie says, go to the builder next. Talk to them, which area you want. Talk to them about what area you want. Yeah. And then usually... It's, it's already been plotted. So you just go and see which uh, plot you wanted. So, you know, and then of course you need to know if it is near to the railway track, near to which place. And then once we finalize, I think you have to pay some deposit money, like uh, 3000 or $5,000, like uh, earnest money maybe, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to go through the, pro and then you, you have to choose like a, which model you wanted. Usually the external may have like a different versions, you know, each model has A, B, C, D. Um, you cannot change, alter or anything, the external other than whatever they have designed. Internal, you can modify based on whatever, you know, that would be like a XT internal. And then I think usually the process is like a four to six months, depending upon like a, from the groundbreaking. It depends which each builder. Um, after that, uh, they pour the, I don't know, usually it's pouring like the basement um, and then foundation and then the frame and then the external and then the internal, you know. Um, and then they, uh, and then after, once they finish, they have inspection. Um, and then before that, I think the city come and then approve all those things. Um, and that during this process, we also have to approve the loan and all the stuff, and then uh, they will go through the underwriting and all the stuff. I don't know, I'm just doing the step by step or anything. Great. Okay. And then, um, so after that, everything, um, the electric plumbing work and everything, we will go through and then final walk through and then go to the lender and then sign the papers. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You, uh, Ansi's going to teach the rest of this class. She just did a great job at a very high level. So you guys all nailed it, by the way. Great work. At a very high level, if somebody was to ask me, 
Um, what's it like to build a home? We're, we, we're considering either a new build or buying an existing home. Then I turn into educator mode. And one thing you'll notice about me that I want you guys to adopt is I want you to treat everyone almost like they're kindergartners, like you're talking to your kids. You keep it very high level and keep it very simple. I love the way Ansi just described that for realtors. That might be a little overwhelming for a, for an actual buyer to hear. So at a high level, I would say something along along the lines of, well, pros and cons. If I buy an existing home, I can close in about a month. On average, if I buy a, a new build, I might be waiting a lot longer, up to maybe even a year. During COVID, it was more like 14 months. It was crazy. The difference uh, in the approach, though, is we, we go to the builder together. Notice I said, we go to the builder together. We hear them out. We decide on a, on a lot and a plan that we like. And then the cool thing is a lot of times we'll get to, dis, we'll get to uh, design a lot of the stuff, mainly on the inside. A lot of times, Mr. Buyer, Mrs. Buyer, the lender, or sorry, the, bot, the builder will have an in-house lender that they want you to use. The reason for that is they'll, they'll offer you some incentives to use their, their lender and they feel more comfortable with them. That's not to say you cannot use your own lender. You can, you just won't earn those incentives. But the whole process, honestly, it's pretty simple. The, the general contractor will reach out a few times to update you through the process. You're normally allowed to go see the progress of the home and take pictures of your new home. And I definitely encourage you to. And then right before we actually close, you're going to go through a process of final walkthrough and what they call, typically they call like a home orientation where you're going to learn how to use all this stuff and how everything works. It's super exciting. And then the house is yours. There's no extended possession for a seller, which is really nice. There's no real negotiation. Now, sometimes the value in bringing a realtor to the table, and this is important for us to know, at the end of the day, the, the buyer is typically going to get the same value with or without a realtor. But if the realtor there knows to ask the right questions like, hey, are you offering any incentives right now if we decide to sign today? That sounds, that sounds appealing, right? And a typical buyer is not going to ask that. But what I'm doing right there is I'm putting the builder slightly on the spot to say, yeah, if you sign today, I mean, we'll... We'll throw in an extra change order. They call them change orders. So if you wanted to throw in an extra customization, like you wanted to upgrade your lighting package, maybe, maybe they get that. And then boom, you're worth your money. Or just for the, the, the sake of reviewing the contract for them, I've had of the probably five or six builds that I've been a part of, the majority of them want me to review the contract prior to them signing. So my value comes in, hey, I see contracts all day, every day. Let me be a good resource. Why? Because the, the, the builder only has their best interest in mind. They don't have your best interest because if you don't buy it, somebody else will. And they know this. So that's our value add. That's our value proposition. When somebody says, I'm looking at build, uh, building a home, but I probably don't need a realtor, right? So actually... I would strongly encourage you to because number one, the builder only has their best in mind. And number two, I can possibly help. I can't promise, but I can possibly help you get incentives. And last but not least, you don't pay for my services. So what difference does it make to you and your wallet? I can provide an impact. I can help guide you through the process and I can keep the builder's feet to the fire. When the rubber meets the road and closing is approaching, I have had to jump in and, and get certain things for my buyers. Example, I built with, uh, I think it was an MI build um, last year. The closing date was extended so far that the person had to go get temporary housing because they had planned to be in their new home by X date and the house wasn't ready yet. I jumped in and demanded that MI pay for their temporary housing and a storage unit. 
they didn't pay for all of it, but they certainly paid for some. And then boom, I added the value there. Paint these, paint these stories to your, steal my story as your story. And that's going to get you involved in being their realtor. Now, who can tell me? Hey, Sally, you can come in if you want. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, here's one key that you need to take away from this conversation, this whole hour long topic. Above all else, make sure that you register your clients. Can anyone tell me what that means? They know that you, the realtor. Yes, exactly, Rachel. The builder knows that I'm representing John and Jane. So they're just putting their history on someone? So the builder will ask you typically when you come in, let's say I was a buyer and I walked into a, a model home and I said, I'm thinking about building. One of the first questions they'll ask you is, do you have a realtor uh, partner? And if they say no, or if they, they if they don't think it matters, then you can just, they would just say, I, I do, but they're not here. They might not stump for you the way you should stump for yourself. So what you do is anytime you know your client is going to a new build site, even if they just mention, mention a whisper of it, you either call or email that builder right away and say, hi, my name is Rachel. I am a realtor with Keller Williams and I have two buyers contemplating building with you. They're going to be stopping by later today. I would like to register my buyers. Their, name, their names are John Smith and Jane Smith. And here's their email address. What that does is locks you in as their realtor. And if they do decide to go forward, even if they don't personally name you, boom, you're registered and you're getting paid out of it. I have learned hard twice. I had some clients who didn't think that they needed real estate help because it was a new build. And this all just happened in the last year. So I should have been smart enough to know better. In your initial meetings with buyers, make sure you bring this up. Say, hey, I'm going to set you up on a search for existing homes. On the off chance you decide to go build a home, you're going to want me there as well. So make sure that you inform me and any potential builder that I'm your realtor. I literally left probably twenty dollars to $25,000 on the table because I did not have that conversation with people that I just assumed knew that. And two homes later, I'm not getting a dime. That's, that's a hard, that's a tough feeling. So above all, register your clients, even if they don't have to know you're registering, that's really not for them to know, honestly, it doesn't matter to them. But if they say, we're thinking about Rockford or MI or Pulte. Okay, great. My next marching orders, as soon as we hang up or I, I'm done with that text message is Pulte, MI, and then Rockford. Here's my clients names. I want to register them. I'm protecting myself. I've taken time typically meeting with these people, advising them. I've given them my expertise. I deserve a paycheck out of that. Um, Lauren, you had a question. Yes, I have something to add. And then I also have a question. Um, I don't know if this is typical because I've only done it obviously with one company, um, but Miranda Holmes, I got an email once we registered my client and it was saying, you know, he's going to come in and sign on this day. And literally, like, I'm so happy that I read the whole email because in really small print at the bottom, it said, like, if something along the lines of if you do not show up to sign in person, you will not get a commission. So I'm glad I read that. And I went to London with him because otherwise I wouldn't have been paid. Um, I don't know if that's just for them or, or for a lot of companies. We'll find out. That's going to be one of the questions that we very bluntly ask. And we're in our recon work here. You're going to be asking them, what does compensation look like for real estate agents? Do I have to be present for signing or not? Like those are, that's a great point to bring out. 
I'm glad you said it. Um, and then my question was that, um, so my client, I just thought of this, my client was pre-approved with just like a regular lender. And then once he decided to go the um, new build route, they made him get pre-approved with their lenders. So is that typical for every like new build company? And also it was weird because he got pre-approved for like a hundred K more than he was with the, just the regular lender. So I don't know why that happened. And so I'm just wondering if you know, you know, why he would be pre-approved for a lot more. It's a great question. And I, I don't know the ins and outs of the differences between a uh, freestanding bake and a uh, builder owned or build, builder affiliated lender. Um, but that might be a question that you ask uh, when you do your, your research, your field work here, as we'll call it. Um, yeah, I, I think most builders incentivize them building or lend, using the lender that's in the in-house. And what that typically looks like is uh, what I've seen from like MI is $5,000 towards your closing costs. So essentially that's keeping $5,000 in your pocket, which is great. Uh, what Ryan was doing was 3% towards either point buy downs or closing costs. What that does is basically if the, if the interest rate is at 6.5 and you want to put your 3% towards buying that interest rate down, you can maybe get down to 6.125, which would save you a lot of money over the life of that loan. So that's, those are, those are decent incentives. Now, I've got a build. Uh, I've got a, a a relationship with a lender who specializes in new builds. He is not affiliated with any one builder, though. And I asked him point blank this week. I said, "Hey, man, because I would rather see you get this business than Ryan Holmes. What's the difference? Why would I go with you versus them? Because they're offering me three percent." He said, and he had a good point. Well what if the interest rate rises? With a lot of these uh, independent lenders, the non-affiliated lenders, you can lock in an interest rate for the duration of that build. And you can have it float, meaning if the, if the interest rate was to come back, come down, you could lock it in at a lower rate. But in this situation with the builder, that's only a good incentive if the interest rates don't rise up. If they rise up, you're going to be buying back down to what it was and you're going to use your 3% fruitlessly, essentially. So that's a good, good thing to call out. And now you know more about why you might consider going through your traditional bank for loan. Now, I don't know that a builder can force you to use their own lender. That doesn't sound like it's legal, but at the end of the day, they can maybe say, no, we're not going to build your house, this house for you. So I, I don't want to give too many like answers or anything. I want you guys to go do some research, but what questions do you all have about the new build process? Because uh, having done like five of them myself, the very first one I walked into, I was like, okay, what the heck do I do here? And number one, how do I get paid? We just talked about that. But number two, like what value am I really providing? And honestly, Victor was saying something a month or so ago. He's like, man, this is the easiest money I ever made. <laughs> My, it's pretty true. For my realtor, I never met him. Over the phone, I said, can you be my realtor? And then, of course, I, I got discount. Boy, because, you know, <laughs> and then I never saw him. So I went to get my paycheck plan. That's it. There's nothing. Yeah. Wow. What questions do we have about the new build process or about anything about it? I was going to ask about, um, so my question would be more about like, these are existing new build homes. How about like buying a piece of land and then custom build a home on it? Is that similar? This is a great call. out. I'm so glad you brought it up. So what I started to say earlier before kind of got sidetracked, there are different points of entry when buying a new home. You can buy what's called a spec home which is a brand new home. It's been built. It's already up, but they just built it to basically, it's like a stock home. If you think about a stock car, a car that has no upgrades is called a stock car. 
So this home has been erected by the builder, but they didn't have anybody already sign up to, to buy it. So now it's just on the market for sale, almost as if it's an existing home, except no one's ever lived there. So it's brand new. Um, the other option is to buy a lot in a neighborhood, which is how like the MIs, the Pulteys, the Fisher, all these other builders typically build is they buy a huge lot of land, like maybe a hundred acres, and then they divvy it up into whatever quarter acre lots. And then that's called development, land development. That's, this is how people get rich, by the way. If y'all want to buy a bunch of land, let's talk, let's go in together and let's develop some land. But then they decide to build, but before they build, they want buyers lined up. So you buy your lot, like Nancy was saying earlier. Now there's lot premiums. This is something that's unique that you need to be aware of so that you at least know your craft a little bit more. A lot that resides in a cul-de-sac is going to be more expensive than one that's on a main drag. Why? Safety, lack of busyness and neighbors. Also, a lot that backs up to woods is going to be likely called a premium lot versus a lot that backs up to power lines. You'll have uh, little re uh, reserve ponds or whatever you call them, like retention ponds in communities. Those are a little bit more highly sought after than one that you're staring at your neighbor. So lot premiums are a thing. So what, how that factors in. I want to add one more thing regarding lots, especially for Indians. And if you come across any of the Indian community, um, some of the region, especially if they are Hindu religion, they like a, a plot facing, north facing. So, and then the builders know about that. So they, we had to give extra premium for that. Even when you are finding an old house also, they prefer like a north facing house. Yeah, if you ever have anyone ask you what the direction the house faces, it's probably for religious purposes or cultural. Great call out. Um, so lot premiums can, uh, for Ryan Homes, for instance, it was anywhere from $2,000 to buy the lot, to reserve the lot, to $30,000. <clears> that's a wide gap. And that's just adding to your loan, right? So if the house base price is three fifty, dollars are you going to actually pay three fifty dollars to buy the home? Not even close, because then you add the lot in, then you add finishes in, and then to Ansi's point, you add the elevation of the home in. What the elevation is, is the, the outside appearance and how the home looks. So you'll see like a farmhouse elevation be more expensive than a traditional, just regular American two-story. The other thing to Sam's point is you have custom home builders. You would need a custom home builder in most situations to build if you owned your, if you went out and bought a plot of land and wanted it built upon, MI, Pulte, Fisher, the majority of those big box builders are not going to build on that. You would need what's called a custom home builder. I would love it if like maybe you, for instance, since you asked the question, I think Monogram is an example of a custom home builder that's local here. Um, and there are, there are many others, but it'd be great if for, for the example of this class bring different builders collaboratively here. If somebody would pick a, a little boutique builder, that'd be great. Um, the time requirements, I mean, the mom and pop builder might take a long, long time or they might be really quick because they got nothing else going on. I was talking to Lauren uh, about Hawking Hills cabins yesterday. In Hawking Hills is an area here in central Ohio that's blowing up because it's been named one of the top 50 places in the world to reside or to, to vacation. And so people are flocking there in hordes to buy land or to buy cabins. And she asked me, well, why don't people just build a bunch of or buy land and build a bunch of cabins on it? And I know for a fact, because I've talked to the builder of a cabin out there, of a, a cabin builder, they're named Jubak. They only build eight or nine cabins a whole in a whole year. So that process is lengthy and expensive because it's so custom versus an MI or a large organization that has a lot more hands at their disposal, a lot more access to capital to buy the products that they need to build. And th they can have those things up in eight or nine months. 
So anxious to hear what y'all determine on, or what y'all learn about time frames to build as well. That's going to be a question we definitely ask. What other questions do we have about the building process or anything regarding it? So like you just said, um, I actually have a list on my phone of custom home builders and then just home builders. I'm not sure the name of it, but that already kind of have the, the land set up for them that you can choose from like with different locations. But the reason why I have that list in my phone now is because of actually like a big mistake that I made. So just a couple months ago, um, I had an investor buy a plot of land and he wanted to build a house on it, um, live in it and then resell. And so we got into contract on this very small plot of land in Johnstown. And um, once we, we didn't look at home builders, custom home builders until after we got in contract. And the issue is that the land was so small and it was something about the zoning that he could not build a two-story home on that small of a plot of land. And so we, I literally spent hours researching custom home builders and calling, I have um, eight or nine on here. And for some reason, I don't know if it was the zoning or what, but I, I had to send them the survey and that was hard to get. And so once I finally got a hold of the survey, every single custom builder said, no, you can't build a two-story home. So we ended up falling out of contract. And if I would have just did the research before, then that would have saved me a lot of time, my customer and the, or my client, and then same with the seller. So we ended up falling out of contract um, and it didn't work out. So make sure you check on that before getting in contract. That along the same lines um, <clears throat> with Lauren, um, yeah, check, especially if you're buying or, you know, you're working with a client that's buying land, but also if you're listing land, know your zoning requirements because the listing agents will, or the buying agents will ask you first before doing any other work. So definitely do your, do your research before. So, you know, what can be done on, on the land and, and all that kind of stuff. Cause you will get all those questions. Good, good conversation. Well, guys, let's let's spend a few minutes before we end, <clears throat> and you pick your your builder that you want. Let's let's um, come collectively. We're all going to ask the same questions so that we all can compare right down the line. So I've started a list here in the chat, <clears throat> and then I as soon as we uh, come to consensus, I'll send this out to everybody so that we all have the same questions. But number one, we want to know the name of the builder. Number two, where do they build? What communities, if it's if this is like MI or a big dog, likely they're going to build all over the place. But if it's, but we want to know what communities are you building in? What is the starting price at the cheapest? So for the, the cheapest entry level home, what is the cheapest starting price? And it's going to depend on the area, but that's fine. That's what I want to know is Marysville starts out at 350. Dublin starts out at 560, something like that. Um, notice I said start at, and I want to go back to that. If you're if you go into contract with a home um, for four hundred thousand dollars, expect to pay, add another hundred thousand dollars in finishes. If you want granite countertops, they add extra. If you want real hardwoods, extra. If you want uh, solid solid doors, extra. Mudroom, extra. Stainless steel appliances extra it's all extra <laughs> round toilets extra yeah. yeah round are you a round guy i'm an elongated man need the elongated bowl yeah maybe it was elongated yeah. one of the two one was more expensive <laughs> you had to upgrade to the a better toilet yeah how many uh i like this question how many dollars on average does a buyer spend in design in design. What that means is after I go into contract, I want this home that starts at 400. How many extra dollars does the average person spend in add-ons? So again, going back to that stock car analogy, if I want uh, butt warmer and uh, hand wheel warmers in my car, I pay extra. If I want the sports package, I pay extra. If I want a uh, hybrid, extra. 
Same deal with homes. How much on average does that cost? Do you do custom builds on land that I own? So if I was to do Sam's scenario, buy land and then want to build, do you do that? We might find some surprises here. There might be some of these big boxes that will do that. And that's good information. What's some other questions we should be asking? Amount of time taken, start to finish. Yes, awesome. Time taken, start to finish. Now that's going to fluctuate a little bit. During COVID, that's when it was like 14, 15 months. Why? Because they couldn't get any help. Nobody wanted to work and they couldn't get materials. There was a material shortage. I don't know if you guys remember back in the day when hard, uh, like wood planks, like two by fours, like went up in price by like three X. It was stupid. It was like eggs. Time taken, start to finish. Absolutely, Lauren added in commission. What does commission look like? What else should we know? What kind of special offer, or if they offer any special offers or uh, financing options or anything like that, like what, if they have their own in-house financing or what their special offers are right now. Love that. Special incentives or in-house financing. So with Ryan, if we signed by Monday, this is what they do. They pressure you. <clears throat> if we sign by Monday, you got an automatic upgrade to the next level on flooring, countertops, and lighting. Okay. Well, in theory, that's a savings of $20,000. Okay, cool. I'll sign now. Great, great call out. What other things should we be pointing out? HOA, Lauren asked if there's going to be an HOA. A lot more of these communities are adding HOAs. So what does the HOA cover, right? Is there an HOA and what does it cover? Is it going to be a, a real stringent one? Because you want to know that. Um, I've seen a lot of builders do like a red tag event type thing. So we can ask if they have any like uh, special events like pricing events coming up or anything like that as well. You can also ask them if they have any amenities like that in the pool or like this. Will there be pool, like community uh, playground, that type of stuff? What I'm writing here is our, our community amenity standard. So a lot of places anymore, builders are just working those in. Uh, uh, a clubhouse, a pool, a green space. <clears throat> yeah, that's something I talked to about um, one of the new developments around me was what the community development was going to be in the in, in the community, like what kind of development they're going to have in the community as far as that kind of stuff, parks, sidewalks, walk paths, that kind of thing. Another question, actually, I went to MI House with my client the other day. They were like, yeah, in, in their... I don't know, I found somewhere no dogs are allowed, no mm -hmm. pets allowed. So that's something, you know, I was like, oh, I didn't know, no fence. So that's something, you know. Yeah, and that would all come down to HOA. So that's important to ask, like what's allowed, what's not allowed with HOA. Well, cool, guys, this is a great start. What, I'll, what I'm going to do, I am going to take a picture of these and then I'm going to send them out to everyone in coaching so that we all have this. And we can all play by the same rules. I just, it's very simple. I want you to go meet somebody, take a tour of their, their model home, set it up ahead of time. Say, hey, I've, uh, I want to do some research. I'm a new realtor and I'd love to establish a good relationship. I got to tell you, my very first builder that I met, he's the one guy that I've done five deal, four, four deals with. And I trust him more than anything. He's the first guy I go to. He's the first guy I met. He's good. Anyways, uh, let's go down the list. So we're going to go in order of who was on first. Um, and that's going to be who can choose. You're going to choose a builder to uh, to question. So Brad, I saw you on first. I'm going Rockford Holmes. And I'm also going to do, um, I have I'm scheduled a meeting. Supposed to be, it was supposed to be this week, but obviously that ain't happening. But with uh, the owner of Price Custom Homes, he reached out to me about some land that I had for sale. So I'm going to actually hopefully meet with them. We're, we're going to try to reschedule that. So yeah, that's great. 
Uh, Ansi was on with me. Uh, you want MI? She's cheating. She already was there. But now you got to go back and ask all these questions. You know, interesting idea that actually I actually contacted my builder at the property and I said, hey, how are you? Because she's the one who helped me with the building. I said, I'm a realtor now. If you have any contact, just let me know. Uh, Sam was on with me. Um, I will do Fisher. And then I also have one of my good friends. Her dad actually owns a custom home builder in Worcester, Ohio. So I can maybe talk to him too. Beautiful. Weaver Custom Homes. Okay. Um, Rachel, you were on early. Who you want? Trinity Homes. Nice. Uh, Kevin. I'd say Thompson Homes. I'd like to give, there's a log cabin builder next county over. Might give them a try too. That's a great idea. I would, I would just from personal learning perspective, I would love to hear from a cabin builder <clears throat> because that is a fine art, right? Um, Aaron. Uh, did someone say Fisher already? Yes. Uh, Pulte. There you go. I got that. Cool. Is um is Bob Webb one? Is oh yes. Customers? Yeah. And they are they are high end. I highly recommend yeah. doing. Great. All right, I can do both of those. That's going to be a fun one. Definitely go to the model because you're going to be wowed at Bob Webb. Um, Daisy. And if you don't know of any, it's fine. I can help you. Daisy, can you hear me? She said Miranda. All right, Victor. But you already got me down. You got Ryan? Yeah. I talked with their financial guy yesterday because I was so mad. So uh, that'll be good. Um, Sally, are you on? Okay, I'll get Sally's in the office. Um, Raquel, you still on? No. Um, Lauren. I'll do Schumacher. Awesome. Uh, did I miss, who did I miss? All right, guys, so I will send out a message probably later today or tomorrow about the questions that I want everyone to ask uniformly. Now, if you have other things you find out, note them down and come in two weeks prepared to share. Uh, I will not be on coaching next week, although we may still have a mastermind next week that I think would be really beneficial for you all. So I'll let you know, but um, appreciate y'all. Uh, thanks for participating. And I really look forward to this exercise. Take it to heart and go learn from some builders because they are a viable option monetarily for us. Thank you all. Love you all. Talk to you later.